Among Iowa Democrats, it's anyone's game at tonight's caucuses. A new Quinnipiac poll has Bernie Sanders leading Hillary Clinton by three points. That's within the survey's margin of error. And voter turnout here will be the key. We are bringing out large numbers of people. We're creating a lot of excitement and energy on the part of people who really are tired of establishment politics and establishment economics, tired of seeing almost all new income and wealth going to the top 1%, want us to address climate change, want us to address a broken criminal justice system. So I'm feeling good, Jake. Our issues are out there. People are really enthusiastic. And if people come out to vote, I think you're gonna look at one of the biggest political upsets in the modern history of our country. Well, I really want a large turnout because uh, we knocked on 125,000 doors this weekend across the state and we got a great response. I'm really pumped up and enthusiastic about the way my campaign has been moving toward uh, this day. Uh, and it really does come down to who turns out. I'm very excited about our prospects here tonight in Iowa and I'm going to uh, work as hard as I can until all of the uh, votes are tallied in the caucuses. John Podesta is the campaign chairman for Hillary Clinton. Mr. Podesta, great to see you today. Great to be with you. When we're talking about turnout here, the latest Quinnipiac poll shows that if Bernie Sanders can manage the kind of turnout that Barack Obama saw in 2008, that is double what happened in 2004, where 40 percent of registered Democrats actually turn out and caucus, that Sanders would get the lead. Right now, the Quinnipiac, the Quinnipiac poll shows Sanders topping Clinton 62 percent to 35 percent among Democrat first timers. Is that a concern? Well, Contessa, what uh, we're concerned about is making sure that we do everything we can to get our voters uh, to the caucuses tonight. We built a tremendous organization here. Uh, Hillary's really closed strong uh, in Des Moines last night and Cedar Rapids the night before, uh, talking about her positive vision. We feel we're in very good shape to win this tonight. Uh, and our job is to turn out our voters, and we've got an impressive organization to do that. How do you think that she can, in the future, resonate more with people who've never been involved in the political process before, never been out to primaries to vote or things like that? Well, look, I think she's, tr she's been out all across the state of Iowa talking to people, uh, doing, uh, she started uh, by uh, in dialogue with people in town halls. Now she's at bigger rallies. We had 2,600 people here uh, in Des Moines last night. Uh, but I think that the enthusiasm we're feeling here at the end as, uh, as she closes this out is palpable because she's the person who, who can get the job done, who can raise wages, who can uh, make sure that uh, the price of pres uh, prescription drugs are controlled. And we're feeling that all across the state. And I think uh, the undecideds uh, uh, are listening. Uh, they know the stakes are high. They're also watching the Republican campaign and the extreme way that that's gone off. So we're feeling good in Iowa and we just we got to uh, get out, do our work and win it tonight. And Bernie Sanders has maintained a considerable lead in New Hampshire. And of course, it's New England. It's his uh, neighboring state where he's been a longtime senator. How does Iowa make or break the momentum that Hillary Clinton needs to move beyond Iowa into New Hampshire and South Carolina? Well, it is his it is his home turf. Uh, Regional candidates have done very well. New England candidates have done very well, almost always winning uh, up there. Uh, but we intend uh, to leave Iowa tonight and go to New Hampshire and be campaigning there tomorrow. We're looking forward to the debate on Thursday. Uh, and we're just going to work very hard to win us, uh, the uh, a vote in New Hampshire. Uh, she's had a track record of success there as, as uh, President Clinton. So we're going to be uh, going up and down the state uh, trying to talk to people about uh, their real concerns and why she's the best candidate to get the job done, uh, to keep the country safe, get the economy moving, uh, raise incomes. Uh, and we feel like uh, she's very well liked there. Uh, obviously, Senator Sanders is also very well liked there. We recognize he has a, a, a lead there, but we think we can close it and win. Uh, we're hopeful of a victory tonight, which will help uh, to uh, propel us towards 
uh, doing better in uh, New Hampshire and being able to prevail. She's trying to juggle all these campaign events and turn out the vote events and rallies along with the uh, news that keeps dripping out about her email scandal. And in the first Democratic debate, Bernie Sanders went up on that stage and said, look, America is sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. It now seems, John, that Bernie Sanders is changing his tune on Hillary Clinton's email problem. Let me play it. I think this is a very serious issue. I think there is a legal process right now uh, taking place. Uh, and what I have said, and you know, and I get criticized, you know, Bernie, why don't you attack Hillary Clinton? There is a legal process taking place. I do not want to politicize that issue. It is not my style. But now on top of that, Fox News is reporting that these recent emails the State Department won't release because they're deemed top secret contained, and this is according to Fox News, it contained operational intelligence that put lives to risk, uh, oh, lives at risk. Know. Uh, there have been continuous leaks to Fox News what uh, professional intelligence, uh, intelligence professionals have looked at and said that they were innocuous, that this is an exercise in overclassification. Uh, and uh, Senator Feinstein's taken a look at them and, and noted that none of these originated with uh, Secretary Clinton. They were, uh, they were, uh, none of them were marked classified or had any classification markings on them. So Fox News will continue to do what it does. Uh, the Republican candidates are obviously uh, out attacking her. Uh, but it, this is more uh, akin to what we saw uh, during the Benghazi hearings, uh, where they throw a lot at her. But when all is said and done, it melts away. Uh, she's asked that these emails be released. Uh, we'd like to see them uh, all released. And uh, obviously, we think that uh, this has been a bureaucratic fight between uh, different agencies in, in, in government. Uh, but uh, the intelligence community, I think, quite frankly, is uh, involved in an exercise of overclassification. One last thing here. Uh, with the caucuses upon us, we also are seeing a big winter storm bearing down. I thought it was really interesting to see Hillary Clinton stepping into the role of weather forecaster. <laughs> Oh, I, I, is that a question? I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I lost just it. I, I wanted your reaction. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the uh, uh, obviously the storm is coming, but it's going to hit after the caucuses are complete. So people will will be able to come out and caucus uh, and then get home this evening before uh, the storm hits. And I think that uh, we want to reassure people that they they can get there and get home safely. So uh, you know whether that's uh, stepping out and being uh, doing a little bit of uh, forecasting and talking about what uh, Iowa ought to expect or not. I think, you know, we want our supporters to know they can get out, go to caucus, uh, support Hillary and get home safely. She was really good at it. She really was. <laughs> John Podesta, great to talk to you. Thank you so a much career. for your time. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Don't forget, CBSN is your home for all things Iowa. We'll bring you results tonight as voting gets underway and coverage continues early tomorrow morning with analysis and the final vote count. We're live at 6.30 a.m. Eastern right here on CBSN.